Hi, my name's Alan Hurd from Hurd & Son. Here in this uh, joinery workshop we do a lot of antique restoration mixed with non-standard joinery. But here we've got a piece, I thought you might be interested in it. It's a lovely two-seater sofa that in its life has been painted red. It's had some sort of gold on it and pretty much layer upon layer. It's also been in a very, very bad way upholstery wise and all of the, all of the upholstery has been redone uh, prior to me actually starting to put the finished coat on. Now the upholstery was done by Trent Upholsteries of Nottingham and they really are superb upholsterers. Really nice and taut and it gives me a perfect base to start my work from. What I've had to do is I've had to take all of the old finish off and then I prepare a, a bowl, it's spelt B-O-L-E. You can, you can buy it but I make my own but essentially it's like either a grey base or a red base, a little bit like red oxide paint, or brown. Primarily you use red or grey. You apply that onto your, onto your prepared surface after you've done all the restoration of the wood and that gives it the base for either the gold leaf or the gilt paste that I'm going to use on this. Now I've put the grey on as you can see here and that's the bowl. Then the next layer is a stippled uh, gold leaf type paste that I make myself. Then on top of that is another layer that's brushed. So one's stippled, one's brushed. And by stippling it after you've roughed up the surface of the bowl, it gets a better grip. A lot of people will try and do it in one coat, but you know, at the end of the day, it's what it looks like. Um, so first coat is stippled, second coat is brushed. After that, we've put on a clear shellac of which I've done a little bit up there and then a brown shellac to finish it because it wants to be quite a dark finish to complement the upholstery that's going on to the top of this. The upholstery that's on there is a very very thick uh, material and it stops all the old horse hair from working its way through and sticking it, sticking it in your leg to be honest with you. So excellent finish upholstery and I'm trying to do the same with the uh, finish of the gilding paste. Now this paste that I've got here I generally run two different materials at the same time. That's the paste that I mix up. It's about 30% 30, about 30 gold leaf, pure gold leaf in that. And the rest of it are gilding pastes. There's about several different products that other people make that I mix into one with gold leaf. So instead of laying the very thin gold leaf over the surface, which gives a very bright finish generally, the customer would like a darker finish. So this is why we're using this kind of material. I'm not telling you how I make it because somebody else will start making it and put their name on it. Then we've got a little cap here and this is just purely methylated spirit. Right, that's my fix. Anyway, what we do is we just get a bit of meths on the end of the brush and then get the paste in and we simply start stippling it in like that. It isn't rocket science, I know a lot of people would like to make out that it is, but it isn't. You've just got to be careful. And as you see from that, we're starting to get that stippled finish. When you come really close to this to see it, you'll see that the grey is showing through. Now as another finish for onto new work, the grey that shows through the gold like this, when you put your brown shellac on the top, produces a fantastic finish so you you don't have to go to all this trouble you can do it as a stippled finish with the brown shellac on the top I've got to work my way around this and all over the top but then I'll come back and we'll do some of the brushing in and then I'll show you some uh, I'll show you some shellac as well that's a bit of a mouthful but I'll leave that one in I'll see you in a bit all right let's get some of this uh, second layer on then so you just start brushing it on like this you're actually better if you uh, apply this in, in, a, in a bit of a shaded area because you then don't get the glare off it and you can see the grey shining through from underneath if you've missed any. But this is an antique piece of furniture so it's going to have areas that you could consider damage or let's, let's call it age related marks. But as you can see this paste with the gold leaf in it really does give a beautiful luster. I've got to go over the entire seat frame like this. If you get any of these bits of the, the, 
the bits of upholstery strands coming down which seem to have a mind of their own don't worry about it because you can knock them off afterwards they don't seem to sort of settle into the surface of the wood underneath or anything and you apply that like that and then when you've done the whole seat you leave this to dry for about eight hours it feels dry before but uh, don't be fooled into go into it before eight hours otherwise all you do is you end up drawing the surface of the gold off with the shellac that you're putting on the top uh, I'll talk about the shellac in uh, in a little while when I've got all this done and uh, you will see what a transformation this chair has been don't know whether you remember from the first photos that you saw of it it was a right sad old piece really it was got what, got what I call saggy bottom and uh, Roger down at Trent Upholsteries has done the customer proud and me for that matter because if you've got a frame that's in poor order um, all it does is make my job to do the gilding and the finished finished article more it's much more difficult now we're doing the rosette on the front and uh, this is where you really start to get your brownie points because you've got to stipple it right into the back you don't want any what I call dark shadows left and this is what I meant by standing it not in the bright light because in the bright light you won't see the dark shadows there we go anyway come back and see me in a little while and uh, I'll have gone all the way around it and I'll show you how to, how to shellac the shellac that I'm putting onto the top of this is a brown shellac or a button polish um, I don't know whether you know what shellac is made out of but it's made from the, the lac beetle and uh, it's essentially ground down and forms the basis of French polish and shellac. This brush is a sable mop, um, very different from the normal brushes that you would use and they hold an enormous amount of shellac in one full mopful. So you have to get most of it out so that you're not running excess shellac down the finished piece. So we'll put that on the floor, that just stops it running back down into your hand and it keeps the top on the brush. So we initially start stippling it in and you'll see immediately that the colour of the gold underneath starts to change. This has had damage on this corner and under normal circumstances I would mend that but the client has asked me to leave some age related history to it and as the finish had already had it we've had to go back down, right down to basics with this one so I've got to try and put some age to it but that will be the last process um, and I won't actually be showing that on camera because they're individual little tricks that you you work out yourself really you know where you'd like damage I can't tell you where to to sort of rough up the surface or make it look a little bit more um, let's call it antique it's a horrible phrase but that's very personal and to each customers choice really but as I start going down here you can see that the whole look of the gold changes it goes from a gold to more of a brown gold and when we put the second coat on the top that will change it again and that will match in with the fabric that the customer has chosen I've got to leave that because the shellac goes off really quickly and if you start drawing more over the top all it does is start to give a wrinkled finish and an orange peel I've got to go around the whole seat which is a very boring process which I'm sure you're not going to want to watch me doing and uh, I'll come back to it when we apply the second coat so I'll see you in a bit right here we have the seat with it all gilded and then the first coat of brown polish on the top now it's a brown shellac polish as I said before or some people call it button polish now we've got it to that stage all the way around what I've got to do is what I call knocking it back and we use wire wool it's just ripped off a big roll and I use very fine and it's classed as four zeros you get four zeros then three two and one zero which is very coarse if you use this what you're doing is you've got to create a key 
which is a, a slightly roughened surface so that the next coat of polish that you put over the top has got something to grip to. This is highly shiny and very little grip on it. And what, what wire wool does uh, that sandpaper or garnet paper doesn't do is it cuts rather than scratches. So it scoops off a little bit of the surface instead of leaving scores in it. So what I'm going to do now is go over the entire chair very lightly with this 4-0 wire wool, give it a key and then on top of that I'm going to put a white polish. Now it's called white French polish but it actually looks milky and it goes on clear. Uh, it's not normally the sort of thing that you'd use on this kind of product but I don't want to make this any darker. The client wants it this colour and I'm not somebody to argue with the lady that wants the nice upholstery to match the gilding that I've done for them. So anyway, I'll shut up and I'll start rubbing back. But it is just a case of lightly wiping it back like this. Put my bins on so that I can see what I'm doing. Right. And don't scrub, just wipe it. Because it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, but it is. I can see close up here that I'm already losing the luster of the French polish and it's giving me a nice key to work with. What it also does is, you, in a workshop environment like this, it's not what I call sterile. As much as we do all of the woodwork and the French polishing and the antique restoration in here, there is dust floating around in the atmosphere all the time and when you apply a coat of French polish it dries very very quickly but under really good glasses you will see and feel tiny little bits of dust in the top of it. So this is what I'm reduce, uh, removing so that when you put the next coat of polish on it doesn't take it from a little pebble to a big boulder because all you're doing is you're increasing the size of a speck of dust by coating it over. So we knock them off at this, sta this stage and I'll see you again in a few minutes when I've done all this and we'll start applying the white polish. So I'll see you in a bit. I'm on the last lap now where as you, you as I go up here you'll see the brightness of this start to disappear as I'm wiping this wire wall up and over it. Now you've got to be I can't I can't begin to describe how much you've got to be careful over how much you wipe this French polish because if you go through it underneath you've got the gold finish and that will wear through just like that. So you've got to be very careful. All you're doing is knocking off the slight little bits of dust on the top. You're not scrubbing a floor like that. You're just wiping. And then another tip for you, when you've done all that, that's as far as you need to go. Just rub your fingers over it very quickly. Don't linger because you'll have grease on your fingers. Knock the dust off with a brush rather than an airline because A, the airline will send it up into the, all the dust up into the atmosphere and it'll be settling for the next five minutes. If you just do a brush, it keeps it localised. Obviously you can see it going all over the fabric here, but at the end when it's all dry, you blow it down with an airline then, not try and brush it off now. If you put your hands on there now, you'll mark the fabric and leave all the dirty finger marks in it. So keep your mitts off the fabric and you'll be fine. Now. I'm just going to quickly show you what it's like in this localised area when we put another coat of white French polish on the top. And I've treated myself to a new brush, it's not sable, this one is squirrel. And I'm using white French polish and as you'll see as I come up, this is just drilled through the lid so you put the lid on your coffee pot and it, that stays immersed in the polish at all times and then it doesn't go hard so you don't have to keep cleaning it out. So you just apply this like that. Can you see the, the gloss of it? And that is white French polish going onto the top. White polish is very hard. Brown polish is hard but not as hard as white. And if you finish it with white like this you're not altering the colour of the gold underneath. You're not taking it browner at all. And then when the whole chair is done to that level, I might even give it a second coat of white, it really will look very, very posh indeed. 
certainly fit for the fabric that's going to go onto the top of it. Anyway, all it is now is brushing until we've got the whole thing up to that level over the whole chair. So I'll see you again at the end of it.